Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Alone in My Head podcast, episode number 63. We are back, and we are going to talk about... What was it? Oh, man, I forgot. As always, I forgot. But before I, I tell you what we're, we're going to do today, uh, shout out to the Patreons, shout out to all the, the, the new viewers and the new listeners that have, have gotten onto the Spotify. I do appreciate you guys. It's Metapod. If you guys don't know what Metapod is, it's a Pokemon. And... um. This is actually what I have around mushrooms, mushrooms, all types of video game paraphernalia. We have Pokemon inside a plant over there, so it's uh, it's pretty interesting here. Notice I have no hat on. Interesting, huh? I know it's weird for people to see me uh, with no hat on because I wear a hat all the time. Why? Because my head gets fucking cold, right? In Jersey, it got it gets cold, especially the back. If you don't have a bald head, you don't know what it means. Like you don't know what it means. It gets cold. Shit gets colder, right? And the back of my head gets super cold that it gets like, uh, I get I get pain sometimes. So that's why I always wore a knit cap. And that was even in the summers. Um, because obviously I had no hair. But the shit got cold. And now it's super hot outside. So wearing a hat, a hat, wearing a hat in um in a hundred and something degree weather, it, it gets sweaty in there. So I'd rather it be medium so i don't wear a hat as much as i used to um so i'd like to shout out supreme hats for for everything you know <laughs> and that was really you know my my choice of hats and i still have some i actually went shopping for a hat the other day and um, i just couldn't justify justify the expense for something that i did not like that much so i'm on a, i'm on a mission for a new hat and if you guys are listening and are a hat sponsor hey you know i'm down to sponsor your hats as long as i like them and as long as they are to my to my taking so we're going to talk about uh the one thing that happened actually this morning so first off i tried to make this podcast three times yesterday the thing is phoenix is homesick and sage just came home from uh, pre-k so I sent them upstairs to go play video games, and the entire time, they're just fighting, yelling at each other, complaining. She's crying, comes down the stairs, comes try to look in the camera. It, it was just a big hot mess, so I, 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 I stopped the take, gave it five minutes, tried again. Same thing happened over and over and over again to the point where I was like, you know what? F this. I'm done. And I was like, let me just do it today instead, and it, hopefully it works out a lot better. And so far, it's been almost three minutes, and... No interruption, so it's already have been better. So this morning, here's a story. This morning, I was doing Sage's homework, which was just like a, a sheet, and it was pretty interesting. Like had little boxes in it, and said like, "What's your name? What's your birthday? What's your favorite color?" Um, already a noise. I thought they're coming down. What's your favorite color? Um, and then the one question that got me was, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" She's in pre-K. She's three turning to four years old. So that question kind of struck my chord to the point where I was like, are they supposed to know what they're going to be at that age? Because I know at that early age, from the earliest I remember, what I really wanted to work at was McDonald's. I think that was every kid's dream. I just wanted to straight up work at McDonald's, so I got Happy Meals and chicken nuggets with sweet and sour sauce. That's it. And then as I got a little older, I realized and heard that garbage men make some decent money. Well, of course, especially as a kid, right? It's like, oh my God, that much money? And now the next thing I want to be was a garbage man. And that was sometime in grammar school. But at pre-K, hmm, that's a kind of an interesting question for that age. Maybe it's to put them on the right path. I'm not sure. I'm not a teacher. I'm not a teacher. I I don't know. So... I asked her all the questions, and when she got to her career question, right, her career, what do you want to be when you grow up question, she goes, I want to be four. What? (laughs) Daddy, I want to be four. And in my head, I was like, fuck yeah, that's all you need to be at that age. That's all you need to be right now is four. And my head... I was just like, man, I wonder if we just thought that way with every other thing, would stress go away? 
because of how we think so deep into the future, how we think so deep into to something else. Years upon years of advancement creates stress. I know most people's stress is, you know, created by money. Like, how am I going to pay for this? How are we going to do this? How are we going to hold this household up? How are we going to pay for the kids' college tuitions? How are we going to pay for our grocery bills? I, I know. Usually that's the main cause of everyone's stress, no matter how much money you make. Right? Usually people that make more money spend more money. So it's like they put themselves in a bigger hole than, than the more frugal ones. And then you have those really good, great ones that just know how to save really well. Like they live by their means and try to increase profit as much as they can. The way she answered it was so genuine that I was like, man, just think about it. If things were just that simple, because you know, once you got into high school, all that pressure got on of what are you going to be? What are you going to do? What are you going to be? What are you going to do? What are you going to be? Your life is over if you don't start now. But like, it doesn't, it shouldn't be that way. Life isn't over. They shouldn't make career decisions at 16. You just fucking realize you had a, you realize how to manage your period. Guys just stop coming out of the bathroom playing with their dick. Like, that's it. You just learned that, and now I have to make a career life decision of what I want to do for the rest of my life? At 16? Some people never even kissed anyone at age 16. Hey, that's me. So you want me before I even became before you even became a teenager or even a, a young adult you want me to make a career decision of what I have to be or want to do or what to uh, what's my future going to look like fucking weird I believe you just create the habits right we talked about habits before make your kids just have good habits and, and really enforce them and teaching them to do the hard thing first and then the easy stuff last. And I feel like that is parents, you know, when we a kid has a hard time, right? And something they can solve, easily something they can solve. We like to jump in immediately. We like to jump in and be the friend and make sure they're okay. Where it's like, no, this is a hard thing for them. Why not give them some space to try to see if they get themselves out of it? Just a thought. You know, and it's, it feels like neglect. It feels like you're doing something bad. You're, they're going to cry and whine. But you got to give them a chance to suffer. <laughs> you got to give them a chance to, 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 to learn how to do the hard thing first. Prime examples like when it's homework time, like you're gonna do homework before you do anything. There's no playing first. It's all gonna change. There's no playing first. You finish your fucking work. When you're done with your work, you get your reward. If you deserve it. That's it. Like if you have homework, get the fuck home. Do your homework. Get it done. I don't care if you do it in study hall. It's done. If it's done, it's done. Then you can play. Then you could do your, your stuff. Then you could do your activities. You got to do your homework. I know. You said, what happens when you're an athlete? Well, that's a different story when you're in high school, right? Then you're required to go to practice after school. Of course, there's, you're not going to uh, be able to do your homework, but now you're a student athlete, right? Which means you have to do your work right after school. So that, that's considered work. Sometimes a sport is not really all fun and games, obviously. Practice is work. Right, And that's why I believe athletics and being any type of an athlete or extracurricular activity that requires you to do something hard is super important in your, your phases of growing up, in your phases of child, child, childhood development. You got to do the hard stuff as much as you want to avoid it. And sometimes for the parent, the hardest thing for you is to leave them be. Right, For to us to like, just watch them go down. Very hard. Very hard to watch them suffer. Because we want to take the easy way out and help them and, and do what we need to do to, to, to be with them and, and support them. Which is perfectly a, a great, great thing for you to do. But are we doing them a disadvantage by doing the work for them? You know what I mean? There's a lot of times I want to you know call it quits and 
help them solve the problems fast. Of course, there's sometimes I do when I see the frustration. I see they're trying, they're trying, they're trying, and you know, obviously they're trying and they're getting very frustrated. I'll give it a little bit more, but then after that, I, yeah, I'll help them and guide them in their way through the problem or through the drawing or through whatever is we're building, you know, because that's the age they're at. They're not like fucking doing calculus, thank God, because then I got to learn that shit. I have to read books and comprehend. You know how hard that is? Even at second grade level, it's hard. But there's things that we have to let them learn. And I think the main thing is hard work. Because it's going to carry them through. And statistics show. Like if you're a college person and you want to send your kids to college, statistics show. Statistics show. A higher percentage of kids get scholarships and graduate and go to college and also get high-paying jobs are the ones that do their homework first. Weird, right? The ones that did their homework before any type of play did their work, they kind of fell into that category. So I'm not saying that if you didn't do your homework, you're not going to be successful. If you didn't, I'm not saying that at all, right? I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying this is the way that I'm going to do it because this is the way I did it. And, of course, there's days I didn't want to do it and I I lied and I didn't. But the majority of the time I did my homework before I was allowed to go outside. That was just a rule in the house. Now, if you look at my brother, I don't think he ever did his homework in his entire fucking life, (laughs) right? But he was successful, you know, and he's a very hardworking person. So I'm not – I can't say that it's wrong, right? I can't say that it's right, But what I do know is that trying to set a standard at such a low level or such a low grade or young age is kind of tough because then it adds that extra pressure. Now they have to do things and they want to be things and they have to do this stuff because this is what I said I was going to do. And now I'm going to do that. God, I mean, honestly, right now I would I, I see McDonald's applications. I would work at McDonald's, but I can't because I don't have the time. I actually thought about it. I did this QR code, right, when I was looking for work because there's nothing to do. I was like, oh, shit, McDonald's hires. Let me click it. And let's say you get paid $11 an hour. It's not not bad. It would have been a job because it's there, right? It's some money on the table, but the time requirements doesn't work for me. I go to a different place. Tropical Cafe is like a smoothie place. They're hiring too. QR code. Click it. Just check it out. And then people say there's no work out there. There's work everywhere. The thing is our egos don't want to do the work because we want a higher payout or we think we deserve more. You deserve nothing in life. We deserve shit. We just live, and that's it. Just because you went to college doesn't mean you deserve anything. I went to college. I did my stuff. I, nothing. <laughs> I deserve shit. But I'll work for whatever it is I need to get, and I feel like that's the the attitude you have to go forward with. It doesn't matter what you do, what you did, what you're going for. You got to fucking work. You got to work hard for it. And I definitely think that if we just use that attitude to, to do anything, just work hard, put your head down, and then enjoy it later. Enjoy the fruits of your labors later. You'll have a better success rate or, or a better work ethic or a better habit that you just created. Versus like, let me take the easy way out and not do anything and, you know, play, play, play. Now when I'm tired, I got to do my work. And now it's forced. Now you have to really force yourself to do it. Because now you don't have that, you don't have that gratification anymore of earning something after you did the hard work. You already got your gratification, so fuck it. Why do I have to do homework, you know? No, it's a weird thought, but that's kind of what I was thinking about today. And that's my thing, for sure. Is let's not stress out so much. And look at the things you're stressing out about. And what are the things that you can do presently, in this moment, to make it better? I just think of when Sage goes, what do you want to do when you grow up? I want to be four. So simple. The answer is right there. And it wasn't an answer that I expected, But that answer made so much more sense than the answer that I thought or predicted that she might have made, which was like Mickey, Minnie Mouse or some shit like that, like an object. All right, hold on a second. I'll be right back. 
And we are back here. I'd like to shout out a sponsor. We have Dynamic PT in Rutherford, New Jersey. If you guys are any type of pain or recovery or hurt or post-surgery or your back hurts or knee hurts, go check them out. Please. They've helped me so much in so many ways. They're so current in their methodologies. It's not just a place where your cattle called in. It's a really great facility. My friend Will runs it. It's a great place. So if you have any type of lower back pain, any type of pain, you're in the area of Rutherford, New Jersey, definitely head out to Dynamic Physical Therapy. It's somewhere in that world right now. Orient Way? I want to say Orient Way. I don't know the address. So you can Google it, obviously, because you're going to Google it anyway to get there or get the number. So again, Dynamic PT, Dynamic Physical Therapist, Therapies, Therapists, whatever. In Rutherford, New Jersey, check them out. So, I don't know, man. I got a tournament coming up. A lot of families coming here. Um, Uncle Ed and Abuela are coming, I think, tomorrow, actually. So, that will be cool. They'll be here for a week. A nice little surprise visit from them. It'll be great for them to see the children, the new house, and everything in that area. So, again, we're just planning and doing things to make sure that we have everything we need for visitors to come. But at the same time, that also helps everything because the kids are be happy to, you know, see someone new. After my mom and my brother were just here, I almost said my father, <laughs> my mom, my brother were just here. Um, it was fun. They had a great time. And of course, they were sad when they left. And that's kind of the, the thing we talk about all the time is when they, it's ha- so happy, so great for them when they're here. But it's so hard for them when they have to leave. You know, just being in that position to, watch them go over and over and over again. This, uh, hopefully it does something for them to, to be strong in, in, in a different way where they're used to seeing people disappear and but still be there. You know what I mean? Like it's, uh, it's tough. But now ever since my, my father's uh, funeral, they always think like they're going to die. So now if anyone is sick, they all think they're going to become angels. You know, it's a, a very common question in the house is, is he going to become an angel? Are we going to become angels? Are we going to be angels? And it's kind of weird, you know, to answer, but it's realistic, and that's that's what it is. But having them here is going to be great. Um, while they're here, I was going to do a tournament, uh, but I can't because I have work the day before. We have the preseason LA Raiders versus the New England Patriots and I know it's a night game so I'm going to be there for a long time I worked this past weekend for the weekend the weekend get it and I didn't get home till almost two o'clock in the morning and from you know what time I wake up like I said even though I go to sleep I didn't sleep till 3 30 I woke up at 5 30 <laughs> that's it it's it's clockwork and I'm up, and then I'm stuck. I'm drained. I'm exhausted. My body hurts. I feel like I'm like walking on a cloud, but I can't go back to sleep. You know, and it takes a while for me to go back to sleep. At least take a nap throughout the day. But you know, my sleep does get affected by my schedule, and the schedule is um, very taxing on my body. Thank God I only do it a couple times a week. Right, I mean, once I try to do it twice, but I can't because I can't work during the week. I can't work Monday through Friday. Like I could work this Friday because I'll have someone here. Um, Abuelo will be here, so I don't have to really worry about the kids. I just have to pick up Sage and make sure we get everyone from school, right? Because I start early. So for like a night, a six o'clock game, I, don't, I have to get in there by eleven a.m. Right to set up, get everything going, and it's pretty, it's pretty detailed. But at the same time, when it's like a concert or late night, ugh, it's so late. So late. And you work so hard. I work so hard. I'd like to say that I wish I could say that it was an easy gig. But it's not. It's fucking hard, hard work. Like, I guess it depends on the bar or the section that you're placed in. But so far, for the last times I've been there, I've walked at least 12 miles. At least 12 miles a night. Oh, a day, pretty much. I work about 12 to 15 hours. So it's cool, though. You know, it's hard work. Get it done, but I don't take it home. And that's it. Just load it up, make your money, and fucking now I could, you know, buy a Slurpee or a seltzer water or some shit. But yeah, I think that we have to. The, the main message that I want to get into it is really let's simplify 
our stresses. Right? As hard as that sounds. Simplify them. The one thing that you can do is meditate. Meditation has helped me in every single way possible. And if you listen to anyone, anyone that has any type of success in anything, they meditate. Right? They take their time to be alone and in and, and quiet and in their heads. They, they have to be in their heads. Yes, of course. It's like I can't meditate because I can't stop thinking. No shit. You're not going to stop thinking. But it's a time that helps you filter out the thoughts and just keeps going. And you learn how to let go of thoughts and realize that they are just thoughts. But a lot of that clutter sometimes never gets a chance to be released. And meditation is key. Even 10 minutes, guys. I don't sit there for an hour and cross my legs and shit. No, I lay down on the couch. I find a guided meditate, guided meditative, I can't even talk, meditative uh, video, and I play it. It's got some sounds behind it. It tells you what to do, where to focus, and it's super simple. The thing is, most of us don't want to do it. Just like we talked about last time, stretching. No one wants to do it. I do it every day now. Every single day has my stretching become better, my flexibility, not so much, honestly, not so much, which means I might have to do more mobility work on top of long, long form stretching. So, you know, I'm trying to find my thing, but I am able to work out more. I am semi less pain depending on what I eat. But for the most part, you know, let's try to keep things simple. Keep it as simple as sage. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be four. That's just the next step. You know, that's all she thought about. Her next two weeks. In two weeks, she'll be four. And that's it. And probably the the answer after that is I want to be five. So I I kind of want to keep that going. It made so much sense. That like, what's the thing that we can work on that we're really focused on, super focused on, or hyper focused on that we can't let it go? And we make it such a big deal that maybe it's not. Maybe it is just being four. Maybe it is just taking the next step. Maybe it, it is just letting it go. I'm not sure. So, again, this was just a thought I had inside my head because this podcast is called Alone in My Head. So, at least I can talk about it in front of you guys. And I'm glad you guys came out today. I will see you guys next week for episode number 64. What we're going to talk about next week is I have no fucking idea. But we're going to talk about something. All right, I'll see you guys later. Thank you again. Again, and and I'll see you next week.